needle. I don't want to move the other needle. One stays static and the other walks the bus. So the biggest thing we need to kill here, we need to kill the dummy bus cycles and we need to kill the PLL. The PLL must not switch to the internal clock. If it does, we're going to lose it. And so you can see here, dummy bus cycle, glitch number one, bang, we whack that. You know, you make bit seven drive, drive a low, 80 becomes zero. So they load a zero into 8B instead of a, an 80. Or you could just change the register it went to instead. You could, you know, so if we look at the clock log instead here, we could, we could kill the, the OR instruction, we could kill the opcode, we could zero it out, make it zero B, make it OR an 80 into register B, which we don't care what it is as long as it's not 8B. 8B is the only thing we care about. Um, and obviously I was successful here because no, I wasn't. I wasn't successful on this log because look right here. We registered three of the 18 bytes, but we should have only had two because of the way I was sampling the bus. And so one of these is a dummy bus cycle. Now the irony here is when it first powers up, the dummy bus cycles are pretty much statically going to come out. So it's, you're always going to see three 18s on the chip. But as it gets deeper in the code and it warms up, all of a sudden they do become random. And you will, you'll lose the code because it won't always come. Um, I don't know why, this code is the same, this is actually, this is taken from the TPM part and I have no idea but I've seen the same exact code in the TPM part, I've seen it in the Xbox 360 licensing chip and there's kind of a back door in, in this for me from a probing point of view because they have a loop that pulls code bytes from ROM and they default the map, the mapping, the segment, the MMU mapping segment is, uh, is set here. The memory management unit right here, they set up, uh, Okay, they set up the data, anyway, they set up for EEPROM to be from like 8,000 to FFFF and they only have 64K of space and they have to virtually map in physical memory into that space. So they do a beautiful mapping and I can, I can change the mapping and then I can glitch these instructions in these loops and the bottom line is, is never expect your code to really run the way it was designed in, in, unless you're uh, working with the manufacturer of your chip to ensure that, that it's, it's bulletproof and or it's going to take a long time to, uh, to reverse engineer. A chip like this is going to run about $200,000 to reverse engineer on the market and um, you know for legitimately for legitimate reasons does anybody have questions I, I didn't finish I'm sorry it's always like this I think <laughs> you know nobody has questions okay nobody okay <laughs> anyway but okay thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you.